Hi and welcome back to my series where I discuss Kuwaiti books. Today's book is called An Unlasting Home and it's written by Mail Nakib. I've actually had the privilege of going for a book reading by her at this really cool bookstore in Kuwait called Bliss and Paper. So this book looks at the lives of five women uh, across three generations and they're all in the same family so the lives are pretty connected. Uh, it looks at not just the individual characters' lives, but also the socio-political context they grew up in and how they influenced each other. And it's really cool because all these characters grew up and lived in so many different parts of the world. So this book goes into stories based out of Kuwait, Lebanon, Iraq, parts of the US, some parts of India. Incidentally, um, Pune is one of the cities uh, one of the characters stories is based out of and I'm from Pune so yeah that was super cool for me um, so yeah it's just a very beautifully woven story across geographies and across lives so this book has a whole gamut of themes but I'd say the main themes are to do with identity and belonging a sense of home and defining what that means um, resilience you know dealing with a lot of change dealing with a lot of loss and uh, also modernity versus tradition and I think even though the book has so many different themes, so many different characters and stories, it never really felt overwhelming. Uh, in the beginning, I just had to refer to the family tree once in a while just to see who is who but honestly the characters were so enduring, they kind of grew on me pretty quickly and then soon enough I just knew who was who and everything just fell into place. So the three main aspects I loved about this book are to do with characterization, their, uh, the narration techniques, and the very interesting interpersonal dynamics. So speaking of characterization, it's very beautifully done because it's like an amalgamation of the character's actions, their anxieties, their thoughts, you know, uh, and I thought it was particularly impactful that they looked at the characters anxieties and uh, thoughts because it added a whole layer of depth to understanding why the character did what they did and another aspect i found really refreshing was that the men in the book were actually understood through the female gaze and i don't necessarily find this very often in you know a lot of books i read so it was really cool to see the men understood from the female perspective and it was done pretty well as well uh, you know just because the book is about these five women uh, it doesn't actually shy away from going into details about the men in their lives uh, an example would be when uh, Sarah's paternal grandmother Yasmin she meets her husband and she describes him not just physically but actually looks at how he is as a person describes him as having the soul of an artist and it's just the description by the women adds so much understanding you know about the men of those stories and yeah i think it's just a very beautifully uh, complexly built characterization the narration techniques um, are pretty chronological it each chapter looks at one phase of each character's lives so it does one character and then the next and then goes on that way so it basically looks at all five characters in parallel uh, but chronologically. But even though it's a chronological narration style, um, not everything is chronological. Like there are certain reveals that happen over time that add a whole element of satisfaction. An example is um, when Sarah, you know, gets intimate with her uh, high school boyfriend, Nabil, and uh, her brother Karim seems very upset and he tells you know he just says fuck you Sarah and I had no idea why he said that I had no context and it was not explained in that chapter um, I was just guessing was he being a protective brother was he uh, worried about his friendship with Nabil it was all a bit confusing but much later uh, we learned that it was because Karim was also in love with Nabil and that was actually really satisfying to know much later because that's when Sarah also realized. So I think even though it was chronological, the fact that certain aspects were explained along with when the character realized was very satisfying because you went along with the characters in their journey. The 
peculiar and interesting interpersonal dynamics also really stood out to me. Um, one specific relationship I want to highlight is that between uh, Sheka, who is a mother, and her daughter Lulva. Uh, so for context, Lulva is the grandmother of Sara. Uh, Sheka is a very jealous mother who, you know, showcased this jealousy in the form of hostility and ill-treatment. And what I found interesting was that this dynamic was not one that I've seen explored in books that I've read before. Um, I've also not seen it being explored in passing for that matter. And the other unhinged thing I saw was that uh, Lulva was actually very okay being kidnapped by her mother for years on end. I mean, you know, she's portrayed to be someone who is empathetic and really understands the source of her mother's hostility. She's also a very self-assured person, so she doesn't let that actually impact her. Uh, but I still thought it was both peculiar, interesting, and actually maybe even uh, unhinged that she'd be okay with just being kidnapped and locked up in her house by her mother. Overall, I absolutely loved the book. It had, um, it was very soul stirring for me and has some very endearing characters. I also really enjoyed the writing. I liked that there were some colloquial Kuwaiti terms peppered in. And also some of the metaphors uh, male Nakib used were very cute because they had this really lovely imagery created. A um, couple examples are referring to Nora as the bird of my soul or um, referring to two characters' closeness as um, two butt cheeks in the same underwear. Just very enduring writing, enduring characters. And I hope you liked my review. If you have any thoughts about the book, please leave me a comment. Bye.